Welcome to Fritz's Dining Table of Doom. I have in my hot little hands Hutchinson's brand new Sector 700 by 28 tubeless tires. I'm going to install them today. I, uh, my options are to buy a UST rim, which ain't going to happen today, um, or to convert my existing kind of entry-level Axiom rims into tubeless. Uh, and the options for that is to use Stan's no tube kit. Um, went to the bike shop. They didn't happen to have any for road tires. So I'm going to do a ghetto conversion using Gorilla Tape. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. So what do I need? I need to measure my uh, the channel on my rim where the Gorilla Tape is going to go. So my handy dandy calipers for that. I've already measured it. It's about uh, 12 millimeters. So I'm going to cut a 12 millimeter strip of Gorilla Tape and tape it on the inside of that. After that, I'm going to mount the Hutchinson sector tube on. Um, and according to their directions, once I mount it, um, oh, the other thing I need is a is a valve. Uh, the other thing a bike shop didn't have was a stands valve um, for for a tubeless kit. Um, so I'm just going to cut cut it out of this uh, old tube that's that's already bad. I'm glad I kept the valve on this one. I usually throw them away. Um, and then Hutchinson also has their own sealant. Um, it says to use 30 milliliters per tire. This is a 120 milliliter container, so this is enough for, for four applications or two sets of tires. The instructions on pinkbike.com say to cut the, to measure the rim from the outside to the outside. Uh, it turns out for, for a road rim anyway, it makes the tape too wide, so I'm using the inside rim measurement, uh, which is this measurement right here, which, on this tire measures to, or this, this wheel measures to 16 millimeters. And so I uh, cut a nick, I measured the tape to that width also, and I cut a nick in it. And now I'm taping it up. All the online resources I've seen say to use Gorilla Tape. Uh, people have apparently tried regular duct tape and it doesn't quite seal as well as what you need. I've wrapped it all the way around. Ensure the tape is flat inside the rim. Once the tape is completely smoothed down, use the box cutter to cut an X where the valve stem will go, like so. Now, ideally, you should use a, a stands valve stem for tubeless, but if you don't have one, then you can cut one from a tube. You know those little nuts that uh, no one ever keeps to hold the, the valve in place? Well, apparently for a tubeless system they come in really handy, so I'm going to have to dig one up from somewhere. If I can find the, find the valve hole, there it is. Just jam it straight in there. So let's see how tough it is to install this tire. Uh, Hutchinson 700 by 28 are kind of, this is, this was Developed specifically for Perry Roubaix. Um, they weren't, Hutchinson was not initially planning on introducing this uh, to the consumer market, but they discovered there's demand for such a thing. And holy cow, this is tight. This is a folding tire. I'm normally able to install tires with my bare hands. Um, but you know what? Since there's no tube, I can use tire tools. Okay, got one side on. The instructions say to pour 30 milliliters in, which is a fourth of this bottle, or half of a half. outside. Let's pop this tire back on carefully. It smells like house paint. Computer. There's 
supposed to shake it. So there's fluid leaking out right at the valve stem. So this is obviously my, my leaking spot. Um, I found a nut. I tightened it down. Maybe that'll seal things off, but I can, I'm going to guess that's not going to be the case. I'm also going to use my CO2 inflator to... Oh, wow. See the fluid just kind of yeah. maybe there's hope. So I inflated it to 100 pounds, there was a distinctive snap sound as the, as the tire popped into the rim. You know what? So I used the CO2 inflator, shot it up to about 40 pounds real quickly, and uh, air continued to wheeze around through the edge of the rim, but then I hooked it up to the hand air pump and took it to 100 pounds, and right about there the the tire snapped into the rim and it still made wheezing noises. I tightened the nut on the rim, on the valve down and I think the pressure loss has stopped. Um, I continued flipping the tire around to let the sealant get distributed well. I um, mean it kind of spat out some sealant around the lease. You can see you know some white gunk along the rims uh, but uh, I think it's working. Now the question is, do I go on a long road ride or do I just go, say, 10 miles and come back and see how much air pressure there is? The max pressure on this tire is 101 PSI or 7 bar. Our recommended pressure is 6 bar, 87 PSI. I have it inflated to 90 right now. This is my front wheel. I'm going to mount it up and see what happens. Wish me luck.